Hello YouTubers, uh, Tross here, playing some more Kerbal Space Program. Actually, uh, it's kind of away for a bit, so I haven't played in a whole bit, uh, but I'm back now. It actually looks like uh, there's going to be an update uh, pretty soon, so I want to see how far I can get before the update. Uh, so last time we came back on a multi-landing trip from the moon, and we have uh, 1487 science. Uh, so let's see what we can do with it. We've, we've gone pretty far in the tech tree. I've uh, skipped a lot of the atmospheric stuff. Uh, skip that. Mm, aerodynamics here. Mm, landing gears. Um, but I think... Well, we haven't completely, you know, did everything we can do at the moon. But we've, you know, the last two missions have been to the moon. So let's see if we can get further. And the one thing that's going to help us do that is the nuclear propulsion engine here. It's, it's the most efficient engine in the game. And, uh, you know, that will let us get out pretty far. Um, so for 300 science, I am going to grab that. Um, let's see. We got more science stuff here. We got a sensor array nose cone. Apparently, uh, that does some science stuff in atmosphere. I think. Atmospheric data while on flight, yep. And we got this uh, gravoli detector, or a gravity meter. Now these together are 550 science, so that's a lot of science, but it'll allow us to get more science. Uh, so if... I, I think it's worth it. Yeah, basically, um, I guess my plan is uh, to send a, a probe. Uh, maybe to Duna, maybe to Jewel. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, but definitely, probe is the next step. Um, we have enough for two more of the 300 level ones. Um, but like these, the lander can, two-man lander can, the cupola, kind of control, capsule, pod, window, thingy, um, they're not really necessary, and this is just a really big RCS fuel tank, um, so I'm not thinking that's needed. These would be nice, but again, they're not needed. I uh, already have docking ports, don't need a smaller docking port, and these just, you know, quad co uh, coupler, some more separators, girder. Uh, command seat, rover wheels. It'd be nice to have, but I don't really think something I need at the moment. If I am doing probes though, it's probe size parts would be useful. Uh, a little tiny decoupler, small fuel tanks, small RCS tanks. So I think I'm going to go with that. Um, see, now we have 468. Um, what do we have here? Um, looks like two pro cores. I think I already have a pro core, but... Um... We got this one. No, we don't have that one. <laughs> we could have that one. For 90 science. Um, let's make sure I do have a pro core. No. Not guessing no, no. Alright, we have 
We have this probe core. Now, is this the uh, last level of tech? If so, uh, we're getting close to being done. Alright, both these pro cores look like they have a little more torque. I'm not sure how helpful that would be. Um, Or do I go for ion? Ion propulsion could be helpful. It's not very strong, though. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the the ion propulsion. Got 168 left, and. Uh, these are only 90, I could get one of these, I could... You know, for 18... <laughs> Not that I'll probably wind up using it, but... For 18, I'll... Fill on that level. And we have 150 left. We could get one of these. Um... Line reaction wheel. That actually may work out helpful. I'm assuming I'm going to have a big uh, launch ship this time. So I'm kind of concerning going to Jewel. There's a, a lot of targets up there. And uh, packing multiple probes on the ship. Launch one at each satellite or something to that effect. Um. Let's go for that. Alrighty. Um, no more. Or at least not enough science. We're down to 60 science for anything else. So, uh, I'm gonna build something off camera and then, uh, hopefully, uh, come back and, uh, explain what I did and why. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, I'm back, and uh, I have quite a ship here. <laughs> um, this is calling it the MGAP launcher, the multiple go anywhere probe. Um, it's a little hard to see. Well, a lot of stuff going on here. But we have four of these probes here. Now, uh, I'll try to zoom in on one. Now, these probes have, well, a bit of everything. Uh, I think they're 36 parts, and we got a materials bay, we got two goo canisters, and two just for stability, even weight distribution. Uh, we got an atmospheric uh, analyzer, sensory computing nose, <laughs> whatever they want to call it. And then uh, we got the Gravoli detector, seismic accelerometer, a barometer. Um, it's on that side, and a thermometer. So basically, we have every science device on here. Uh, we got two antennas, and actually on the back we got the folding up uh, comm dish. Uh, we got three big solar panels, 
Uh, we got our engine, some RCS, and we got some landing legs. And we actually have two parachutes because uh, I'm going to try to land one of these on leave. And uh, Bop and Pole are also, uh, with their low gravity, should be easily landable on with this configuration. Um, and all of this is around a central um, probe, more of a mothership that has three nuclear engines. Uh, so basically the idea is this is going to get into Kerbin orbit, we'll transfer over to Joule. Um, not sure if we'll just uh, fire the engines to slow into Joule orbit or maybe uh, try a bit of uh, air, arrow breaking in Joule's atmosphere. I have done that once before, uh, more or less successfully. And uh, then we'll s basically get into orbits that will be on intercepts with various satellites, uh, launch these probes at the satellites, uh, have them break, get into orbit around the satellites, do some science, and the central strip itself also has a copy of all the scientific equipment. Uh, it's got lots of RCS uh, because it's going to be its main maneuvering. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe uh, we'll do some, you know, so basically we can hit five different targets. And uh, each target hopefully will get uh, far, near, and maybe landed science out of it. Um, so yeah, I basically just did a slight bit of testing to make sure I had the thrust at least to get into Kerbin orbit. And uh, we do. Uh, we have uh, basically in kind of asparagus staging uh, you can see each arm here is uh, identical we have six boosters to help us get off the pad and then there's four uh, skipper rockets the biggest I have right now so four skipper rockets each with the well if you want to count this is normal size two and a half normal size or basically uh, one orange plus a quarter tank. One and a quarter orange tanks, basically. So, uh, I have uh, tested this lease into Kerbin orbit and then reverted. Uh, so, we'll uh, see how this goes. That was, though, without these probes on the top. And Actually, even the, the launcher vehicle was a little simpler, but uh, we should be good. Uh, let's see, I got all sorts of uh, action groups set up for rolling out uh, solar panels and taking readings, opening uh, communicatrons, and then the probes themselves have solar panels and do a reading. So, uh, Let's uh, launch this and uh, see how it goes. Alrighty, here we are on the pad. And uh, since we actually have some new science equipment, um, let's, uh, let's see if we can use it here. So first we have our uh, sensor array uh, nose cone. Temperature pressure readings suggest today's a good time for flying as any. Uh, that looks good. Oh, we get 90%. off electric charge. We got like 6,000. What the? Oop. Hmm. 
Oh, that dish down there opened. That was a bit interesting. Um, all right, let's um, can we extend extend you? We also have the Gravoli detector that's new. The reading manual food challenge command team is able to take Egger readings of the local gravity. Let's uh, transmit that. 9.81 meters per second squared. Oh, same dish opened up again. What is this with not enough electric charge? We have plenty of electric charge. Is that because the probe body runs out? Alright. Kind of wanted to launch with the, you know, full electric charge, but we have enough engines here that I don't think it's going to be a problem. Should have just uh, told this one to transmit, saved it. And... So, uh, actually, let's try that. Uh... This one just seems to think it's calibrated. <laughs> let's keep that data, and then... Extend you, and then transmit. Look at that, we didn't even run out of power this time. At least not yet. Oh. That's interesting, it's because the probe seems to be running out of power when we uh, get that, but it's sitting right on top of two big batteries. So that's uh, interesting. I wonder if I can... can't tell it to keep its... like not transfer its charge, but whatever. We're... Uh, I think we're all set to go. We're a little low on electric charge, but with the amount of thrusts and uh, electricity we're going to generate, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Let's uh, get the map in order here. Back out a little bit. There we go. So, we're going to throttle up. I may back off after a little bit. Um, but we're throttled up. Let's uh, kind of center here. So we're going to launch in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Lift off. Getting about uh, eight frames per second here, so it'll be a bit choppy until we lose some of these stages. Now that we're flying. that data.
got a bit of a spin, but it doesn't seem too bad. About to reach... 10,000. And I'm actually going to wait until this... Uh, first liquid state drops off before doing the uh, gravity turn. how we're doing. That's better. Um, we are actually basically up at altitude. Let's quickly add a maneuver. Figure out how much uh, thrust.
Enter. Oh, 68. Ooh, by 170. That's kind of wonky. But, uh, small maneuver here. And, uh, We'll be in uh, orbit. We still have uh, about a quarter, maybe a fifth, by the time we're done with this burn of our fuel left. Uh, so that's pretty good. So let's uh, let's time warp. Alrighty, um, you want to rotate around. Don't have very much torque, and I even added a uh, SAS. So we get some extra torque. Do you see we have these uh, small solar panels all over the place? Uh, they're providing enough power right now. Alright, there's our mark. That's that's close enough. Alrighty, we now need to plan how we are gonna get to Jewel. We have plenty of power, so I don't need to worry about putting out solar panels yet, uh, especially with the. Our main solar panels are kind of blocked right now. Alright. <clears throat> Everything, uh, if you don't know, kind of orbits in a counterclockwise fashion. Uh, because of that, uh, and because we want to get further out, we need to add to our speed. And the best way to do that would be firing on the night side of Kerbin, because that will increase our speed in this direction. Fire on the day side, that will slow us down, and we'd actually be dropping in, and we'd then have to fire... Well, we'd still be going around this way, but we'd be slower, so we'd be dropping in towards the sun, and then we'd have to fire... Uh, outward again. So rather than slow down just to speed up, let's speed up to speed up. So we want to uh, start a maneuver maybe like that. We can uh, adjust it later and we can uh, thrust enough to escape. And 
and it looks like because we're encountering the moon, it's not showing us. There we go. So let's uh, set our target. Interestingly enough, I can actually, that would have helped with the escape point. And let's see if that. Alright, we're going to be here. When Jewel's there. So this is not going to be a direct trip. Um, didn't expect that it would. I wasn't looking at any uh, timing. Um... Actually, uh, <laughs> the way this is going to be, it's going to be, I'm actually going to, if I move this here, there we go, 36 minutes, we can plan the rest of this out and we'll get it on the next orbit. <clears throat> that actually looks better, we can, um, why is that, oh, so it's, Grabbing it in the wrong direction. So we need almost uh, 2,000 meters per second. Now we're not going to get this out of uh, the current stage. One thing I need to add is lights, but these four outer are almost out of fuel. But then we have this inner with our efficient nuclear engines. So, uh, I think we're gonna go for that and, uh, Then just add a small maneuver here. Um, I wonder if I can do that. Probably do that over here and I'll probably use less fuel. So, uh, yeah, that's my plan as of right now. Um, actually, let's zoom back in here. <coughs> Basically, I have two things I want to do right now. Let's, uh, want to prepare for this, uh, burn. But we collected science on the way up, and actually, um, I want to send that back.
All right, we're back to one time here. We're almost over the space center. Let's uh, let's look. We got the Gravoli meter here. Science team will want to see these readings. Let's keep the data. Let's extend. And uh, let's transmit the data we have. Again, that's... Uh, Be this guy hitting zero. Not sure how to fix that. I mean, we have plenty of power in these batteries here. Transmitting down to, uh, Trouble Space Center. That was the atmospheric analysis. Gravity scan from just above the highlands. This is uh, the other atmospheric uh, analysis so uh, keep that for now hopefully you'll be sent to the next uh, or with this same send data or maybe I'll have to send it separately Alrighty, we got uh, we got some more signs. Um, I'm gonna extend these panels just to help our recharge. Cause we actually got uh, down about halfway there. Something I was not expecting. And uh, let's. Uh, Let's line up for this uh, next burn. Now, here's the problem. This next burn is going to be 2 minutes and 4 seconds, but that's if we were using these 4 skipper engines. Um, we're not going to be using them for long, because they're going to run out of fuel. And then we'll be down to just these three nuclear engines. And they're very efficient, they're just low thrust. Um, they probably have... These three together are probably one quarter the thrust of one of these engines. Um, so while this is two minutes and four seconds, I'm guessing it's going to be 
several times that, maybe maybe on the order of 10 minutes total. <clears throat> so, I think I'm going to start burning 8 minutes ago. The thing is, I don't... I'm going to be still pointed towards the planet at that point. <clears throat> um, maybe I should burn with six minutes to go. And we'll just continue the burn after that. And we haven't crossed the center point, like burning straight down at the planet yet. We are in a decently wide orbit, but, uh... Right. We're charging up at a decent rate right now. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna fast forward, stop about six minutes ago. That means we will be in the dark, but these engines will be producing power. And uh, we have plenty of batteries. Yeah, here we are just past ten minutes ago, and we'll be firing straight down into the planet. That wouldn't have been good. All right, let's, uh, how's this look on the map? Okay, we're kind of still going to be firing at the planet, but that will give us, uh... Give us enough time, I think. We're still in the sun. And right, we're going to fire up the engines in five, four, three, two... One. did a little more than a third. Let's uh, disconnect. And fire up our nuclear engines. We have a, looks like another nine minutes for us. And the sun just went back.
back out into the sun. About two and a half more minutes of burning. And that's going to be uh, close enough. Alright, so it looks like um, 352 days. Ooh, that... <coughs> Should have been watching the map. That went way out further than I expected. So it's only to just barely touch. Oh well. Um, we still have plenty of fuel that used maybe a quarter of our fuel. So, uh, two things I left to do in this episode. One, let's open up the solar panels now that, uh, we're not going to be thrusting for a long time, although these small ones we have are providing electricity if we're going to need to transmit anything, which is what the next major thing is going to be. We're going to need more power, so let's uh, let's hit the action group. <clears throat> so 
So that extends our solar panels and our antenna. I guess I uh, missed this one, or this one was extended and I wound up toggling it. So that gets us, uh, well, more power than we'll need for a while. So, uh, let's also open our antenna dishes here. <coughs> so we're in constant communication. And, uh, we're about to escape. Well, maybe not about to, but we're on a path to escape. And this will be the, uh, first ship that, uh, will leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. So, uh, let's take some, uh, science readings here. These will all be duplicates. Mostly. Material study. High radiation uh, causes a few of the samples to glow. Looks like it would be fun to paint the rocket with this. Only seven points, but uh, you know, it's science. Gravity scan. High over Kerbin's water. Subtle changes in gravity. Mystery goo. That's only one point. Mr. Goo and the others, temperature and seismic and pressure data obviously can't be taken. So, uh, all we have that accomplished, let's, uh, time warp here. There's the moon going by. And leaving Kerbin. Nice little eclipse there. Let's uh, slow back down. Alright, we're not quite past the moon's orbit. That's basically, uh, we just passed our, the closest point to the sun we'll ever be. past the uh, moon's orbit. Let's uh, do some more science. Subtle changes in gravity. Mystery goo is practically not worth it anymore. See, we're getting uh, 45 power a second. Oh, 36. Not sure what changed there, but. Alright, let's time warp past Minmus's orbit. Do some more science. And 
And I'm just going to discard the goo data at this point. And in two hours, we'll be outside of Kerbin's influence, where no vessel has been yet in this playthrough. And in any second now, this will swap over. Okay, let's uh. So looks about the same. Kerbin and Moon is pretty far off. Let's do some science. It should all be new science now. <coughs> Chill study will space high over the sun. So, uh, samples have started glowing. Fun to paint the rocket. Same text, but 275 science. Let's uh, transmit that. Gravity scan. Measurement of gravitational forces in these conditions. 660 science. Let's transmit that. Who feels right at home? 110 science. Let's transmit that. Twice. Um... Yeah, so that's uh, that's about it for this video. I'm gonna spam some more science, um, but uh, I'm gonna call it a video here. We'll uh, continue our orbit out here next time, and then we'll um, probably do a maneuver so that on our next orbit we'll meet up with Jewel. Um, but I'm actually, when I say next time, I'm not actually sure, kind of want to, I mean, this is going to take a year, so I don't think the Kerbals will just do nothing for a year. Um, so maybe I'll, you know, after these, since these probes are launched, I'll, I'll do another mission to Moon and another mission to Minmus now that we have, uh, the gravity meter. And we'll take some gravity readings on them in the mean on them in the meantime. Uh, but I'm gonna call this here, and I'm just gonna, you know, spam some science until these aren't uh, worth very much anymore. And I'll uh, catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.